Hello everybody, welcome to this live session, question and answer session for Living Abroad. Let me start the Instagram as well. Now we are connected both on Facebook and Instagram, so that uh, it's available for a day on Instagram. And maybe if everything goes well, according to technological um, cosmic laws, <laughs> you can also watch from YouTube and Facebook at the end of this program. And um, so here we are about uh, talking about living abroad. Um, the reason I'm doing these sessions, um, uh, live um, programs, both in Turkish and in English, is because I know my main audience is the Turkish community, but some of our Turks, some of us are married with non-Turkish people, and they are very much related to our culture, but they can't always communicate very well in Turkish, but they are also part of our culture community, so I'm uh, mainly addressing them. Uh, um, because they also live abroad. If they are living in Turkey, they are abroad. If they are living in a different country to their uh, native country, it is abroad for them. And also, if they are living with a partner who is not from where they, they are born, uh, then actually they are a mixed culture, mixed family, and there are difficulties that surrounding um, both internally as a couple, also for their kids, also for the community around them, you know, how they are received, how they interact with the environment. These are all subjects that we can discuss in this um, question and answer live meeting. Okay, so welcome everybody. If you have questions, please fire them away. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about them. Uh, uh, from the ones that I've already received. Okay, um, now, as I said, mainly uh, there are people who are mixed couples that I would like to address here mostly, but if there are other uh, questions, and I, will, I might try to include other general subjects as well. Uh, but you know, what happens when a child is coming from a mixed couple, meaning that their father or mother from Turkey and their mother or father from another country. What does it happen? Now the question is, you know, where are they going to live? If they live in um, the, one of the countries of their origin, one of them will always be outside of their country. If they live in a third country outside their um, both original countries, then there will be other challenges to overcome. They will be foreigners for both of them will be foreigners. Uh, this concept of foreign is quite interesting because um, Ibn Arabi is one of the um, uh, thinkers, uh, authors, writers from. Um, the past from our ancestors and he always says if there is a problem there is always the idea of separation so this concept of foreigner uh, either mm, that we feel like a different person than to our community or that they see us as different because we dress differently we talk differently maybe we have different customs um, we don't share the same history we don't speak the same language even though we might speak the language of the country that we are in we might not understand what they mean from the words that they are using um, in fact there was this uh, document that came to me the other day um, like dutch people apparently speak very well english but when it comes to understanding what it what the english means they don't get it because there are some tiny difference <laughs> but quite big really like when they when an english person says this could be better what they mean um uh, oh, pardon, it's not too bad it's not too bad uh, they mean this is terrible 
<laughs> but then a Dutch person thinks that actually I'm, I haven't done so badly. <laughs> There's room for improvement, but I haven't done badly. Whereas for an English person, it's awful. I don't think there's any way, any way of improvement. You just trash it or something. You know, like it's so different uh, the way that English refer to something. And but we non-English speakers, uh, non-native English speakers, understand from that. So we there, there's a depth of um, uh, nuances that it's very difficult to get into when you are not from a, a native speak from when you're not a native speaker. So what happens to the kids? That's where we start from. Obviously, the more they interact with um, a community and speak a language from the native speakers, then the more they get fluent in that language and in the cultural nuances that's involved, that is involved in that. So uh, the best way to approach the kids is to give them an opportunity to live in both cultures as long as um, it is possible and then that gives them a, a, a real resource variety diversity that they can actually um, benefit from i call i didn't call that I, they, because there is so much mobility in the world amongst professionals and they call these kids third culture kids because they don't belong to either culture and they create their own culture and that gives them a big advantage in life because they are more flexible they are more creative they think more widely about stuff they are really um, the future shapers hopefully uh, I'm a bit biased, of course. Our daughter is a third culture kid, but um, um, before our, our daughter was uh, has become a third culture kid, she was a Turkish kid mostly, and she didn't have she didn't visit England until she was twelve, more or less. And um, uh, so the only experience she had was her father uh, speaking very good English and reading English books me uh, and him speaking English at home and that was it really that was her experience of being English part of an English um, uh, culture and then when of course we decided to move to England uh, then she started to go to school here then home educated then uh, be part of the community here uh, even though she's not that sociable she's like breathing the air here and now i'm actually asking her about the nuances that she can fit, fit uh, fill me in she's 15 now so they are very quick to pick up because they are like sponges aren't they i mean they're obviously sponges up until seven mostly but then it continues again gradually diminishing we are all sponges whatever our ages but still, our ability to uh, absorb uh, diminishes because our minds are getting cluttered as we grow older. So, uh, 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 I remember my husband telling our daughter as they were moving that year, 19, 2016, she said, he said, you are very lucky because um, uh, now you can take the best aspects of both cultures. In, you know, there are always ups and downs of a culture, and we can always find um, criticize things to criticize in every culture, and things to identify with. So he was actually setting the stage for our daughter that he, he she can actually identify with the aspects of the culture that she's going into that will. Um, enliven her um, make her grow and be more present in life be more passionate in life as well as um, with the Turkishness that um, that she has actually developed over the years you know whatever she can take with her to the new culture and also combine them both uh, obviously she's she has a set, series of relatives in Turkey and she visits them regularly um, and this is a, a work in progress life evolves you know um, 
our family members evolved through interacting with us and he uh, evolves through interacting with them. So um, this is something that grows over time. Okay. Um, so basically, um, there, there is a threat, uh, I know, and I think a lot of children would say and complain, and maybe parents will also bring it up, which they did in my question. They talked about how some of these kids don't feel belonging to any culture. Like, they don't feel right in either of them. And I remember our daughter doing this project where uh, she um, produced um, uh, rare animals. She was supposed to research uh, rare animals. And the animals that she actually researched were animals from different species, and um, like lions and leopards, leopards, how they combine and they create um, a different species together. Um, so that's, that, that sort of work actually is very healing for a child and for us as well. Um, and what, what it means, finding a place in the world is uh, one of, uh, not as one of many, but one of few, uh, because you know, the number of children grown, uh, born from a family like us is probably limited and we haven't got a means of coming together as these families and maybe if we met we didn't we wouldn't like each other that much inside because we might come from different backgrounds and uh, the only similarity would be that we come from the same um, nationality so it doesn't um, create a, like instant connection when uh, there is this similarity but life might bring her up with such kids in the future and they might find common aspects but um, the thing is for our kids um, it is to be able to relate to everybody even though they are different and this is um, um, like I remember in her school how uh, our friends who's also um, her, her friend's teacher uh, so, sorry, her friend's mother, who is our friend, uh, she she was saying how having an English kid, completely English kid in her classroom, made a difference in terms of how she talked about uh, Dardanelles war. Uh, in, in the past, it was a glorious victory that she was referring to, how Turks won over English, or um, English and allies. but. Um, uh, nowadays, you know, like having a child in the classroom made a big difference for her and she couldn't say losers and winners in the same way. So she had to be, she felt like she needed to be more neutral, more like um, looking at it from a different perspective and uh, understanding wars from a more personal point of view rather than historical and uh, impersonal place. So uh, the, the, our kids' presence bring those two cultures and all the old traumas, history, uh, past conflicts into the present in a way that's healing. And I think we need to see that aspect. And it's a big responsibility from us uh, <clears throat> to be aware of that. When there is a um, uh, conflict when our children are ostracized in our classroom or in different parts of society by being by being uh, referred as the English or Turk or is Muslim or Christian or whatever and um, then that's the place where we need to remember we have a history of um, um, community conflict between two nations uh, or between different nations could be any different uh, culture, cu country. It's similarly, it could be French, it could be um, uh, German, it could be uh, um, anything, um, American, whatever. So we need to find that uh, the reasons behind all of these uh, conflicts now have their uh, roots in the past. It's not just 
about the present and not feeling in disempowered in relation to that and um, feel victimized by it, but empower our children that actually we have a we are in a very powerful position to um, address these past traumas. I know it's difficult for a child to understand this concept, especially if they are quite young, but uh, at least being able to understand ourselves, we can project it to our environment, to our community, and that will make a big difference to be able to look at it from this larger perspective of healing with um, past traumas between communities and cultures and countries. So uh, it's a big, big responsibility, I know. And um, when you are faced with uh, such um, difficult emotions addressed to a young person, uh, how you will sit with it, how you will live with it, how you will protect your child can be quite um, um, trying, let's say. And I will. Uh, I have talked about it in the Turkish version from a different perspective, but I will repeat it here for this problem. Um, I would like to talk about the answer Dalai Lama gave when she, he was asked about how to protect our children, how to prepare our children to the future, how to bring peace to the world, how to bring equality like between diminishing the differences between poor and rich. He had one answer for all of these problems. He said, wake up with love in your heart for your loved ones, for people you don't know, and for those who are giving you harm, seemingly giving you harm. And, and fill your, your heart with love for all of them and make it radiate from you. And do this before you sleep, and do this anytime in the daytime, whenever you 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 have different worries, fears, and um, uh, impasses that you come across. Okay, that's what he advised, and I love this advice because it's so simple and it's so valid. There is a law in life, in universe: what you give, you get, and if you give love, you will get love in exchange. Even if you don't think so, you will get it eventually. It might be requiring your patience, it might require some time, but believe me, th this is a law that works over and over and over again. And it's proved a million times, a thousand times, a million times. And, and it is proved scientifically as well how this works. Attracts, attracts similar things attract each other and in the quantum level the vibrations reconnect repeat themselves and when you your vibration is love you can only get love in return because it is contagious epidemic um, you may not feel it instantly but eventually you will and um, so it seems very simple and I also use Ho'oponopono, which is a very simple, again, free of charge, very, very powerful healing tool. And it's not only healing now, but healing generations before and all those involved. Um, the, the, the reality um, is ours, our responsibility alone. Even though we are the children of our ancestors and we have been influenced and like um, whatever happened before us is determining what's happening now quite a lot. It, 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 it only is valid to the extent that we need to take responsibility. And the future is totally, totally is dependent upon what we do with today. And if we create more hatred, more vengeance, more negative feelings, that's all we will create and continue creating. So the aim is to accept lovingly what's happening. So we say, I love the feelings that I have. I love the um, um, helplessness. I love the um, um, negative feelings towards people who harm my child, who make her feel bad. But 
you know, you start with love in your heart, even though you find it very difficult because it's hard, I know. You start with love because the only thing that can change anything is ourselves and love. And that's the only transformatory gate. Like you can only reach to the universal uh, power of um, influencing anything, healing anything through love. Um, anything else is actually an invitation to heal. If you don't feel love in your heart, it's because you need to heal something. And again, the healing comes with tools like I give you. Um, I know that it's like a tautology, like I give you the tool of love to heal the trauma that is not love, that causing you not to feel love. Um, but you know, all the therapy work that we do is in order to bring you here. So if you can actually do it without intervention, all the better. But all the therapy work, all the work that we do is actually in order to bring you to this point where you can actually use acceptance love in order to heal the past trauma so that you can enjoy the present you can create a joyful present without um, those fears worries anxieties and um, negative harmful um, wishes and feelings um, of course they all have place there is no problem about any of them it's just that they are a way towards the healing okay um so let me tell you a little bit more about Ho'oponopono um so we started with loving this feeling that we are having um that is hurting us that's creating upset in us and then we um say we are sorry for this feeling uh, why are we sorry because this is what needs to heal and it gives me trouble. I'm sorry for it. And I'm also sorry because I take responsibility for what's happening. And I'm sorry because I took part in it. I created this reality. I'm sorry. And I apologize. Now, this part is very, very important because most people misunderstand because they feel already victimized by the situation. They say, I forgive. But the point is not forgiving. There is nothing to forgive. There is a lot to apologize for. That's the difference between our normal day-to-day -day perception as opposed to Ho'oponopono's understanding of what's happening. You are responsible 100% of what is happening in your reality. This is hard to accept, I know, but it is the truth. We are responsible. We ordered, we went to a restaurant. <laughs> which is the world, the planet, Earth, we came as a human being and we said, I want this experience, I want this food, I want this, um, whatever comes to my way is what I ordered, I accepted, I wanted it in order for the evolution of my whatever, I wanted it. And then now, because my consciousness is not always aware of my previous agreements, I say, why do I have to live this? I don't want it. And uh, that creates a big trouble because I actually wanted to live it, to learn from it, to grow from it, and to transform and maybe heal whatever I have experienced, my ancestors experienced and brought to this world in order to um, bring us as, as humans to a better place. But especially, I start from me. I am me. And I want to come to that joyful, energetic, passionate, wonderful place where I'm not actually influenced by my traumas and I'm actually transformed them. And I'm not talking about what's happened in the past now. I am talking about how I enjoy the moment, how I'm happy with myself, how I am hopeful about the future and I'm envisioning a wonderful world and I'm living in it now, now. And I'm seeing all the signs of it happening. So this is the world we want to create, we want to project. Um, and Ho'oponopono allows us to cleanse the past traumas to do just as I, what I was describing to you a minute ago. So we apologize. First of all, we loved. Then we said, I'm sorry. 
And then we said, I apologize for whatever caused this moment in time, this painful situation for me and for my daughter, for my husband, for anybody who is involved. And anybody, anything that caused this situation to be here in our present, I apologize. You know, they told me when I couldn't come and visit my family for three years, uh, nobody could understand. They even thought that I might be, we might be cheating, might be separated, and we pretend that this is the visa problem. They, we are told them it wasn't the case. We really were quite distraught by the situation, but determined not to be victimized by it. They, they also told us, why don't you go to the court? What, the, what is the court? I mean, it's just another place where we will uh, like come face to face with authorities. There was something else that we needed to do, and I used to open up quite a lot. And now I'm here, and maybe I'm going to get some um, help of a solicitor also uh, to move on from the situation. And I feel like uh, I've done my work of healing the past traumas. And I think my husband did and our daughter is, they've done brilliant. They, they set up our home, they found our place in the community and like the, I just came and I settled in. They were all waiting for me, they all recognized me. And like as if I have been here all this time, but I haven't, I mean, how is it possible? I don't ask me, I don't know. But our um, preparation, our, um, the journey coming me bringing me to today helped us i'm sure we, we have stood in the right place so i'm sharing it you from experience that it works and it um uh, really uh, helps to use it and so we do apologize and then we thank you for giving us the possibility to cleanse the situation all the way from generations downwards and um, uh, in fact we talk about our emotions and also we, we know that objects have also got this sort of uh, energy they carry with them so if for example this coat is made by children who are suffering and they are being um, exploited i'm actually carrying that energy with me so i do hope and upon of it uh, the energy that i am carrying and actually helping all those um, uh, abuse, uh, corruption, and um, uh, insensitivities to clans, and also setting up the stage for the uh, future presence and the future so that uh, more humane practices are used in. Uh, cloth making for example so you don't know how you contribute how much you contribute by just being in the right um, state of mind and using the right tools as simple as Ho'oponopono please 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 be aware that these are very powerful tools very simple tools very cheap to reach and don't make don't underestimate just because they are free okay I hope you enjoyed and appreciated this live event. Um, um, I wonder if there are any other questions because we run out of time and um, we, we are just about to finish. Some people are here but they haven't got the English for it. Uh, I have done a Turkish version uh, a little bit earlier. Maybe you can watch it. Um, so I'm glad that we have met here at this place in time. Maybe you are watching me later than this live event. And I hope what I said will resonate with you and will help you shape your present, future and your joyful life. You and your loved ones are significant. To receive regular tips to help you achieve more autonomy, visit my page.